Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today we're going to continue to talk about idioms that mention people. We have mentioned some idioms, but there are also expressions that use names. But I guess we're focusing specifically on idioms that have people's names. Like we said, Bob's your uncle. Last time we also talked about a jack of all trades, master of none, and then we also had the phrase to not know someone from Adam. And we're continuing to talk about some other idioms that mention people by name. Well, not just idioms. Look at our first one. We're going to be talking about names.、Uh, sometimes we use names in phrases, and if you don't know that those that that particular name symbolizes something, you might get lost. Like Jane Doe, John Doe. You might think those are real people、mm. or real names. They're not. We're going to be talking about that.、Uh, Tom's got one that goes along with his own name, Tom,、mm. that he can.、Uh, Talk about. So we're going to get started as we always do by reading through today's lesson, and then we'll be back to、uh, explain some of these and add a few more. Jane Doe, John Doe, Jane Doe, feminine or John Doe, masculine, are placeholder names given to anonymous, unidentified, or hypothetical people, often in a legal context. The phrase used since the 1300s evolved from a now extinct British legal process in which landlords used fictitious residents called John Doe to demonstrate they were the authentic property owners. Example: The police are asking for the public's assistance in identifying the Jane Doe found murdered last week. Pandora's box. This saying comes from the ancient myth of Pandora. Who, according to Greek legend, was the first human woman? She received a box as a wedding gift from the god Zeus, but was cautioned never to open it. Curiosity overcame her, and she opened it, releasing misery, death, and evil into the world. A Pandora's box, therefore, describes something that's best left alone because it could cause untold problems if examined closely. Example. Don't ask Ted about his work situation. You'll open a Pandora's box of pessimism. Heavens to Betsy! Exclaiming "Heavens to Betsy" means you're experiencing surprise, anger, or disappointment. It's similar to "Oh my goodness!" In the 19th century, English speakers began substituting expressions that contained words like "God," "Jesus," and "Christ" with other words to be more respectful. Heavens to Betsy was a variation of "For Christ's sake." The identity of Betsy is not known, but one theory is that it comes from Betsy Ross, the creator of the first American flag. Examples: Heavens to Betsy! I wasn't expecting you back for weeks. Are you still reluctant to insert a name idiom into your next conversation? We hope your answer is now. No way, Jose. Okay, guys, let's dive in. These are so fun to talk about. There are a lot of them. I was just looking up even more. Now, Jane Doe and John Doe are names we use when we don't have the real person's identity.、Uh, sometimes someone is tragically killed, and we can't identify them immediately. And sometimes they're never identified, which is very sad. And they'll go. Uh, to their their grave as a Jane Doe or a John Doe, or maybe someone is hit and put、uh, hit in an accident is put in the hospital. Doctors don't know who they are because they're unconscious. They don't know who their family is. They don't know who to contact. They are listed as a Jane Doe or a John Doe until they're identified. So Jane Doe, of course, is for females or for women and girls, and then a John Doe would be the masculine、uh, placeholder name. A placeholder is just some something we use in、uh, substituted for a person's name.、Um, if you're having a dinner party, you might have placeholders, people's names、uh, typed on a little piece of paper, and it's put on the plate. You can't just sit anywhere you want. You have to sit according to where the placeholder names are. But yeah, these are placeholder names given to people that we can't identify currently. They're often used in legal papers or legal documents if they want to keep someone's identity secret. 
Right, they are often used as a sample. Like if you go down and get your driver's license or something like that, they will show you what the driver's license is going to look like, and they have a picture of an anonymous person there, and then it will say, "This is Jane Doe" or "This is John Doe."、Uh-huh. Sometimes you'll see the phrase "John Q. Public" as just a standard name there, but it's basically showing you that this is what the document is going to look like when you finish it. But we can't use a real person's name because then it's legal, and they might. Get in trouble or something like that. So again, they use a substitute name or a placeholder name, and of course, these are all anonymous or unidentified or hypothetical. Anonymous means they have no name; they're unidentified. We don't know who they are. And hypothetical means it's an imagined situation.、Mm-hmm. The phrase used since the 1300s, well, that's a long time ago, evolved from a now a now is. Extinct British legal process, in which landlords use fictitious residents called Jane, Jane or John Doe to demonstrate they were the authentic property owners. So this comes from、um, England, of course. There was no America in the 1300s. If you evolve, it means you change slowly through a process or over time. So it evolved from this process that they were using long ago in England. Example: Well, the police are asking for the public's assistance in identifying the Jane Doe found murdered last week. You'll often see this sort of thing in the newspaper, or sometimes they'll use it in news that's broadcasted on TV. Or on radio, fictitious.、Um, if someone's fictitious, of course it, they're fictional; they're not real. So that's where that particular、um, name came from or evolved from. That's、uh, the story behind Jane Doe and John Doe, which I didn't know until now. Yep, they were imaginary residents, and their names were John Doe or Jane Doe, and they used this to demonstrate that they were the authentic property owners. Okay, let's move on now to something from Greek mythology. Pandora's box. Maybe you've heard of that before. This saying comes from the ancient myth of Pandora, who, according to Greek legend, was the first human woman. So this is in Greek mythology, or it's a Greek legend, and according to their Uh, mythology. Pandora was the first human woman. Okay, and that was her name, Pandora. So, according to the myth,、um, the Greek legend, of course, she received a box as a wedding gift from the god Zeus, but was cautioned never to open it. If you're cautioned to do something, it means someone warns you about potential danger ahead. So you should probably listen to people who are trying to caution you to do something. It just means, you know, be extra careful. They're warning you that there might be danger. There's not always danger, but it's good to be cautious. Cautious is the adjective form of this word.、Uh, to be cautioned means someone else is telling you or warning you. You can also just caution someone yourself, and you wouldn't use the be verb there. So she was cautioned. You better not ever open that. Yep,、yeah, she was told to be careful, and curiosity overcame her, and she opened it, releasing misery, death, and evil into the world. Okay, so curiosity is the state of being curious about something. Oh, Gee, we go ahead. I want to know about something. So we always say that kids are curious about things, or they have a lot of curiosity. It reminded me of the phrase "curiosity killed the cat." It's very similar to opening Pandora's box or、uh, doing something that maybe is a little risky or dangerous.、Uh, kids often will touch stoves. You know, their parents will tell them over and over again, "It's hot, don't touch."、Mm. But they just can't stand it. They have to test it. So curiosity killed the cat, or curiosity can hurt your your kids if they're too curious. So she just wanted to see what was inside the box. She couldn't help herself. Yep. So she was overcome with curiosity. 
Curiosity got the better of her, and she opened the box, and that released misery, death, and evil into the world. And a Pandora's box therefore describes something that's best left alone because it could cause untold problems if examined closely. So we use this phrase to describe any situation that is similar to this, when there's something that's best kept a secret, or it's best that somebody else doesn't know about this because if they do know about it, then And we're going to have more trouble, and it's not worth it to let them know. Yeah, maybe you're at a business and you have a big project, and you think it's going really well. But maybe someone on your team wants to double check with,、um, you know, the boss about it, or maybe another supervisor. And that person is particularly negative. Maybe it's best not to ta- to ask for feedback. It could open. Pandora's box, which means you might have to deal with problems you just would rather avoid. So be careful about your curiosity.、Um, it's best to keep that Pandora's box closed as much as possible. Untold problems, yeah, problems you really would like to avoid or hadn't even thought of or expected. Sometimes opening that Pandora's box is just a mess. So you want to.、Um, Just avoid that as much as possible.、Uh, one phrase that I can bring in that's、um, something that just occurred to me is raising Cain.、Mm. If someone raises Cain,、um, Cain is the name of the brother.、Um, in the beginning of the Bible, Adam had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain was the evil one who wanted to kill Abel because he was the good son. Well, if you raise Cain, it means you're making a big fuss, and it's usually you're making a big fuss. Publicly, oh! If you tell the boss we did this wrong, he's going to raise Cain with us. Meaning,、oh, he's going to get mad, and it's going to be a mess, and we'd like to avoid that. So, if you raise Cain, if mistakes are made, it's usually you getting mad in public or making a big fuss about something. Exactly. So again, we're back to the phrase Pandora's box, and here's an example. Don't ask Ted about his work situation. You'll open a Pandora's box of pessimism. So Ted probably has a bad job, and he does it most of the time and doesn't really talk about it. But if you ask him about it, boy, you need to be prepared for about an hour of his complaining. He's going to be <laughs> whining about it. Oh, I hate my、Ugh. I hate my coworkers. My boss makes me work overtime all the time. Blah blah blah. He'll just go. On and on. So indeed, you'll open a Pandora's box、mm-hmm. of pessimism. Pessimism is when you're pessimistic. Pessimism is, of course, when you see the worst sides of things. When you're always negative, basically about life.、Uh, the opposite, of course, is optimism. And of course, a person who is has pessimism is pessimistic. And then, of course, the opposite is an optimist. Are you an optimist or are you a pessimist? Or if you're right in the middle, we call you a realist. She's realistic. My father was super optimistic.、Um, he would say my mom was pessimistic, but we thought my mom was realistic because my dad was super optimistic. So, yeah, there are kind of three levels there. We're going to talk more about some of these phrases when we come back. But first, we're going to talk to someone who's always optimistic: our Chinese teacher. 听众朋友，大家好。我们昨天跟大家介绍了一些有关于名字的片语，包括“将就完成啦 ”，“and Bob is your uncle”， 还有“不二不惊的人 ”，“jack of all trades”，“master of none”， 还有呢，根本就不认识某个人 ，“do not know someone from Adam”。那么今天还要再介绍三个有关于名字的片语。第一个就是 “Jane Doe” 或者是 “John Doe”，“Jane Doe” 指的是女生 ，“John Doe” 指的是。男生，那么其实啊，这个 Jane Doe、John Doe 啊，指的是赋予一个匿名、身份不明或者是假设性的人所留的名称，通常会用于一些法律的语境当中，或者是像医院当中，如果有。来了一个不知道是谁受重伤，然后也没办法辨别身份，女生叫 Jane Doe， 男生就叫 John Doe。其实呢，它是在十四世纪的时候啊，当时有使用的一个片语。当时呢，是从个英国的法律程序啊演变过来的。我们看一下第二段这一段的第二句的地方 ，the phrase 逗点之后，其实是一个关系子句的简化 ，which has been 省略掉了。后面的 used 就是被动的被使用。自从十四世纪，那逗点之后呢，才是出现句子的整个
动词 evolved from。可是为什么要特别提到这里呢？因为其实后面还有一个限定用法的关系子句。那么先行词是 a now extinct British legal process， 就是现在已经没有的英国法律的程序。从 in which 一直到句尾的地方，我们要整个左右挂号起来。in which 指的是在那个法律程序当中。后面会加完整子句哦。当时是这样，就是说，呃，房东呢会使用名叫 j u n d o 的虚构的居民来证明他们是真正的房屋的一个拥有人。不过，这个法律程序到现在已经是不存在。可是 j u n d o j u n d o 就一直留到现在，就有无名氏的意思。像我们的例句当中看到，警方呢现在就是希望大家来协助遭到谋杀的无名氏，这个尸体到底是谁呢？ Jane Doe 是一个女性的尸体。那么接下来就是第二个喽，潘朵拉的盒子 （Pandora's Box）。潘朵拉当然是源自于啊，远古那个希腊罗马神话的潘朵拉的神话。因为其实根据希腊的传说，潘朵拉是第一个人类女性。那当时的故事是这样子，就是说呢，宙斯给她一个盒子作为结婚礼物，但是宙斯警告她说：“你绝对不要打开它。”那这样子的话。大家都很好奇啊，为为什么不能打开呢？那里面到底有什么呢？好奇心居然战胜了他，结果潘朵拉就打开盒子，打开盒子的时候就飞出来什么呢？飞出来痛苦啊、死亡啊、邪恶，所以痛苦、死亡、邪恶就来到了这个世界上。好，这故事当然很有趣，不过我们还是要看一下这一段的第三句 ，curiosity 这一句呢，我们看到第二个逗点之后有一个 releasing。这边是一个简化的句子哦，我们会说是分词构句。Releasing 还原应该是 and released。为什么句子要简化？为什么会有分词构句呢？因为当它打开的时候，同时就释放了这一些东西。好，如果你真的回归的话，这个句子其实是有三个动作的。第一个动作就是 overcame， 好奇心战胜它。第二个动作 open 跟 release 其实是同时打开盒子的同时就释放出了那些东西，所以第三个动作就把 a n d end 给省略掉，然后让动词变成分词，这样就会有两个动作同时进行的功能存在。好，所以潘多拉的盒子当然指的就是比较不好的东西，然后你就是不要去理它。如果你一直去管它，打开潘多拉的盒子就没有好处哦。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to continue talking about idioms. That use people's names, and I suppose some of you out there are wondering, "Hey, Tom, are there any phrases or idioms out there using your name?" Yeah. And unfortunately, there are a couple of them, which I I've remembered before today's lesson. There's one called "Peeping Tom."、Uh. To peep needs to, means to look at someone secretly. So a peeping Tom, of course, is somebody who tries to look at women if they're going to the bathroom or if they're trying to change clothes and stuff like that. It's not good to be called. A peeping tom, and there's another phrase called a tomboy, which、oh, yeah. refers to a girl who likes to act like a boy,、uh, especially when she's young.、Uh, she doesn't like to play with dolls. She goes out and plays sports with the boys and stuff like that.、Uh, she doesn't want to learn how to wear makeup, or she doesn't want to wear dresses and stuff like that. We describe someone like that as being a tomboy. And、uh, there was another one, but、uh, I can't think of it right now. Is there anything that have to do, any phrases that have to do with Stephanie? Can you think? No, of there are no Stephanie phrases. My name's、um, relatively new, so it's not used in any idioms, unfortunately. But、uh, we use names for a lot of these.、Uh, peeping Tom, I wanted to mention. We have peeping toms that will look through the windows of apartments and homes. It's kind of、mm. creepy. I was thinking about. Uh, a phrase my dad used a lot of a famous character from Disney called Mickey Mouse, and he would say, "Oh, it's a real, it's a real Mickey Mouse operation, or that's a real Mickey Mouse store, or that's a real Mickey Mouse、uh, firm." When you use this word Mickey Mouse to describe a company or maybe a store 
or just how someone does something. It just means their quality or their standards are really not very good. They're very low.、Um, they would break easy, easily, Mickey Mouse, <laughs>、mm. because he was thinking,、um, you know, it's just it's not very good quality. But、uh, yeah, we'll use that sometimes. There are a lot of these we're going to talk about.、Um, oh, there's one more I wanted to mention before we move on to heavens to Betsy is. Oh, he's a real Jekyll and Hyde. Now,、mm. Jekyll and Hyde refers to a person who has a personality that changes quite drastically. Sometimes they're really nice, and sometimes they're just awful. They're kind of evil and mean. So, Doctor Jekyll was the the mean doctor, and then Mister Hyde was this calm. A very patient man, and it comes from Jekyll and Hyde, the story.、Mm. But、uh, yeah, if, if you're described as being kind of a Jekyll and Hyde, it means your personality changes very quickly, and no one can kind of count on you being just、uh, the same every day.、Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes you're really nice, and sometimes you're a poop. Uh, indeed, and you don't want to be a poop, indeed, or、no. you might get flushed down the toilet as、right. a piece of poop,、oh. and you don't want that to happen. But again, we're talking about different kinds of phrases, and I did think of the one、uh, oh, with、what? my name. It's Tom Foolery. Oh yeah.、Uh, sometimes that means people are screwing around too much; they're not <laughs> being serious. So you might hear your mother say, "Hey, no more Tom Foolery, no more monkey business. You kids, stop、mm-hmm. being so naughty,、mm-hmm. etc." So there you have it. Some other ones that we'll mention on the side. Here, but let's get back to our lesson and talk about the next idiom with someone's name. We've got "Heavens to Betsy," which、uh, does sound kind of old to me. This、uh, sounds like something my grandmother would have said. Yeah, but it's still around, and we know what it means. Totally.、Um, when I was growing up, it went from "Heavens to Heavens to Betsy" to "Heavens to Murgatroyd." Uh, Murgatroyd was just kind of this made-up word. It comes from a cartoon that was on TV when Tom and I were growing up. But、uh, I just checked that. I was like, "How do you spell Murgatroyd?"、Mm. Some of these things you grow up with, we never saw written down. We just heard it, and we kind of learned how it sounded, and we'd repeat it. But、uh, "Heavens to Betsy" is sort of is an exclamation that you make if you're surprised, maybe angry, or even disappointed. Heavens to Betsy! Look at what these kids did in the toy room. It's a mess. Get in here and clean it up. Yep. So exclaiming "Heavens to Betsy" means you're experiencing surprise, anger, or disappointment. So if you exclaim something, that just means you you say it really out loud. "Heavens to Betsy!" My goodness. And indeed, it is similar. It is similar to. Oh my goodness!、Uh, some people, a lot of people, overuse the phrase "Oh my God," which、uh, is considered offensive to Christians. So try to say "Oh my goodness" instead. It's more polite. And in the 19th century, English speakers began substituting expressions that contained words like "God," "Jesus," and "Christ" with other words to be more respectful. That's basically what I was just saying here.、Uh, if you use these words in expressions, you are taking the name of the Lord thy God. In vain, so you don't want to do that. It's offensive to Christians, so you want to be respectful and not use those words. So yeah, you might say, "Goodness me," or "Oh my goodness," or "Heavens to Betsy." My I say, gosh. Yeah, I, I say, "Oh my gosh."、Uh, you'll need to read the next one because I don't say this at all. Oh, you don't?、Huh? I don't say、okay. heavens. Well, look, it's a variation of what. Uh, it's a variation of the phrase "for Christ's sake." Yeah, that's really offensive, guys, to so many people. So be careful with this sort of thing. If you watch、uh, some Hollywood movies, of course, they use a lot of swearing, and they will say things like this quite often. Yeah. But yeah, remember there are devout Christians around, and they will be offended if you say something like that. So actually, again, you yeah. know, even in my business, my company in New York. Uh, which was founded by a lot of Jewish folks. We never had words like this because it was considered swearing,、mm. and we just had a very polite office. So don't be using these words in the office. It's not considered polite speech.、Um, the identity of Betsy is not known, but one theory or idea is that it it comes from Betsy Ross. If you don't know that name, I'm not surprised. Most Americans do because she was the woman who supposedly sew,、uh, sewed together the first American. Flag Betsy Ross. She was a real person, and she was the creator of that first American flag. Tom, I was、uh, thinking about this, and similar phrases would be, and you still hear them today, is for Pete's sake.、Mm. Pete being a, a guy's name, for Pete's 
Pete's sake, what are you doing? Or, or for the love of Pete, get up! You're late for school.、Um, we hear that a lot when parents, is, especially, are frustrated with kids. Indeed. So that's probably where it came from, or at least that's one theory. We're not a hundred percent sure of that,、uh-huh. but again, it may have come from. The name of the creator of the first American flag with the thirteen stripes and thirteen、yeah. stars in a circle. So here's an example. Here it says, "Heavens to Betsy, I wasn't expecting you back for weeks. Goodness me, my goodness, you're back." I was gonna have some parties and stuff like that, but now you're here and I've got to cancel them. <laughs> oh no! So here we're gonna wrap things up in the final paragraph. It says, "Are you still reluctant、mm. to insert a name idiom into your next conversation?"、Uh, yes, indeed, it is kind of tricky. If you're not a hundred percent confident in your English ability, you might be reluctant to use a name idiom in your next conversation. Hopefully, our explanations here will give you that confidence. Yeah, if you're reluctant. You kind of don't want to do something, but maybe you're talked into doing it.、Uh, to be reluctant, you're kind of hesitant, unwilling, but you know, usually someone can talk you into doing it. We hope your answer now will be no way, Jose. We use Jose, which is a Spanish name for a guy. It's another form of Joseph or Joe, but it rhymes. If you can hear that, no way, Jose.、Mm. So we love that because it rhymes, especially. And、uh, I wish I could talk about that some more, but、uh, we don't have time. And it's now time to turn things over to our Chinese teacher. 那么第三个有关于名字的片语就就是 Betty. Betty 什么呢？它其实完整的片语叫做 Heavens to Betty. 翻成中文其实就是天哪的意思。可我们现在说天哪，都是说 Oh my God, Oh my goodness. 对，没有错，就是那个意味，就是你你可能很惊讶啦，很生气啦，或者是很失失望的时候，说 Oh my goodness。或者有些人会说 Heavens to Betty。那为什么会这样子呢？因为其实啊，在十九世纪的时候，英语使用者他们开始把一些呃，像一般的言语当中会提到的 God。Jesus Christ 都把它替换为其他的单字，这样子比较能够对于表示上帝的一个尊重，所以才会衍生出 Heavens to Betsy， 其实就是要取代 Oh my God Jesus Christ 这一类的字眼。不过在这一段当中，第三句啊，我们要看一下取代。这个动词，我们看到的不是 replace 哦，而是 substitute。但是它其实，在句子当中是放在 began 的后面，所以我们看到动词 ing substituting。那这个所谓的替换，要注意跟着是最后面有一个 with， 用 a 来取代掉 b， substitute b with a， substitute something with something else， 用什么东西来取代？所以取代掉的是一些 expressions， 哪些呢？就是含有 God、Jesus Christ 的这一些的表达方式。好，我们这两天看到很多有关于名字的片语，大家练习使用哦。我是 Anna， 我们下次见。Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Thanks for joining us, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.